The following is a presentation of William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. We are one week away from the NFL draft, and we've got some first round standouts alongside me on the desk. Naming them off, we got Mark, Joe, Mikey, and Trent. And you know, guys, this is a very special block. WP Sports Desk, I'm afraid to say, is on the clock. And Trent, we're going to start off with you. Mock draft, first 16 picks of the NFL draft. Who are the Carolina Panthers taking with the first overall selection? With the first pick, I got to say, it's quarterback out of Ohio State, CJ Stroud. It could be any of these four quarterbacks going first, but I believe it's C.J. Stroud because compared to all the other four quarterbacks, C.J. Stroud is the most ready for the NFL, having more experience than Richardson and a better build than Bryce Young. So I think that Josh McCown is going to love him in his quarterback room. Yeah, definitely going to be an interesting potential pick to match with Frank Reich over now in Carolina. Mikey, going left to right, you are the number second selection, the Houston Texans. I don't think they're trading for Trey Lance. Um, you know, I don't think height matters. I know Trent mentioned it. You know, I don't care about the small frame. You got Russell Wilson, you got Drew Brees, Kyler Murray, all under six foot. Great. He throws the ball, gets it out of his hands quick, and he's really creative as an athlete. He's not going to, you know, outrun guys at the NFL level, but he's going to make plays. And I think he's just ready for it. Yeah, Bryce Young definitely going to be a potentially electric player if he can stay healthy. Joe, number three. Well, if they keep this number three, I'm going with Alabama's Will Anderson. He's probably one of the top edge rushers in this year's draft list. And last year, 146 total pressure, 20 sacks over the past two seasons. Excuse me. And Will Anderson is just a guy that's going to be a difference maker on that Arizona defensive unit. Yeah, no, definitely. Potentially was thought as being the number one overall pick for a while, Will Anderson. Alabama defenders always well-polished coming into the NFL. Mark, the Indianapolis Colts, what do they need? Yeah, so they need a quarterback, right? And I'm going to go with someone that you're very familiar with, and Anthony Richardson, the quarterback out of Florida, 6'4", 244 pounds, an electric playmaker with both his arm and his legs. You know, Shane Steichen from the Eagles is going to want a quarterback that can open up the offense, super athletic, and Richardson fits that bill. I really think that... At the age of 21, he has all the potential in the world, and he's exactly what the Colts need right now. Yeah, definitely be very interesting. Haven't had any success since Andrew Luck's departure. Trent, going to wrap it back around to you, the Seattle Seahawks. Well, Seattle needs an edge rusher. If Will Anderson's off the board, I say they take Tyree Wilson next. He's got a big frame, fully athletic. I think he's going to do great things with Pete Carroll. He's the perfect coach for him. Very interesting. There we're still a quarterback remaining on the board, so I guess you don't have... Don't have Will Levis going to Seattle. Potentially, that could be interesting. Mikey, you're on the clock. Lions don't need a quarterback, I'll tell you that. They need a running back in Bajon Robinson. He is an absolute animal. 5'11", 215. He dominated college defenses, and he's going to dominate at the NFL level. I know you don't want to take a running back high, but they got to go all in on offense. They have a good quarterback, good receivers. Might as well just go all in. Yeah, very difficult. Very interesting the way running backs work now, drafting one. Uh, in the first round. Not always the premium selection, but he is one of the most talented we've seen come out of the draft for a long time. Joe, the Raiders, who we got? Yeah, listen, the seven pick. This guy's still available on the board. I'm going with Jalen Carter at Georgia. This guy, listen, is 6'3", 214 pounds, a massive player, very talented, very explosive, huge, dominated the season as well, part of that Georgia National Championship team. Listen, Vegas could use a guy like him, a difference maker on, the, on that defensive front, pair him up next to Max Crosby. They, they probably have a good chance to really stop the run this year. Yeah, best probably player on that Georgia National Championship defense, and that's a tall order considering how much talent is there over there with Kirby Smart. Mark, your second pick, eighth yeah. overall. Yeah, so I've got the Falcons here, and I don't know how he's still on the board, but Christian Gonzalez, the cornerback out of Oregon, six foot one, 197 pounds, great man-to-man -man player. That's really his game. Super fast, twitchy, and a really good run defender as well. And you can re really never have too many good corners. You know, they just traded for Jeff Okuda, but getting a guy in there who's younger, he has all the potential in the world, and I think it's a great pick for the Falcons there. You know, Falcons definitely a terrible roster, but definitely got some holes in it. N NFC South can be very wide open. A pick yeah. like that could definitely help out. Trent, we are back to you. So for the ninth pick, I have Lucas Van Ness going to the Chicago Bears. Many would say they need a left tackle, but I think... Braxton Jones has had a really solid season his rookie year, so they're going to need a lot more help on defense, and Lucas Van Ness is a guy who could play edge rusher and on the interior line, so he gives a lot of depth to a defense that really needs it. Yeah, it feels like Iowa, there's always like one player on Iowa each and every year that kind of stands out. You know, there's like a TJ Hawkinson. It seems like there's always guys from Usually Iowa. Usually on the line. Pro produce good, some way. good players. Yeah. Yeah. Like produces them. good products. Mikey, we're in double digits for picks. 
who we got for the Eagles? Hey, speaking of line, uh, Peter Skaronski is going to go to the Eagles, I think. Um, he's really versatile. I know he's listed as a tackle, but, you know, you could see him shifting the guard, yeah. even center if you really needed it, but that's not going to happen. But with Kelsey and Lane Johnson aging, you got to shore up that line. you got to protect Jalen Hurts. You just went to a Super Bowl, shore up your line, get things ready. Good pick that they traded for from New Orleans. Yeah, definitely. The Eagles' offensive line, one of the most feared in football, I mean, a pick like that would only add to it. That depth would just keep going. Joe, pick 11. I believe our Tennessee Titans are on the board. Yeah, listen, the Titans, he's probably one of the top receivers coming out of Boston College. Zay Flowers might be a little bit of a stretch of a pick, but also could be a rich pick at number 11 for Tennessee as well. Listen, this is a guy who's very competitive, put out huge numbers. He put 200 catches, over 2,000 yards, 31 touchdowns at Boston College this year. And listen, they still have a quarterback at Ryan Tannehill. They lost A.J. Brown when, he went to, when they traded him to the Eagles. Listen, he could be a guy who could be uh, in, their, like, two, in, in their receiver slot guy type of style for, the, for their offense. Yeah, Joe. Just drafted Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. Not really sure if he's the number one yet, so that pick kind of that two young receivers that they end up keeping Derrick Henry. The Titans offense could maybe make some noise potentially. Mark, where are we going next? Yeah, so Texans here at 12. You know, their division rival just took a receiver. I'm going to take a receiver here in Jackson Smith and Jigba. Probably the best receiver in the draft. Instant starting slot receiver. Can really create mismatches there. An exceptional route runner. And he can really take on a role as a volume pass catcher. And that's really what the Texans need, especially if they do end up getting Bryce Young like Mikey thinks. Yeah, if they get that quarterback pairing, whether it's Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, potentially if maybe Stroud would have faulted to, and you compare those two up with college teammates, kind of like a new Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase type of trend. But Trent, with a couple receivers falling off the board, what is your next selection? I got to say, my New York Jets at pick 13 pick Broderick Jones, a left tackle. Now this guy, he's got one of the best motors in the draft, and he's a real angry run blocker. It's just what the Jets needs for their offense, and if he needs to develop, he could develop behind Dwayne Brown for a year. Quite frankly, he's the perfect pick for the Jets at this position. Yeah, I know that that would make you very, very happy, Trent. <laughs> very happy. Talking about it for a while between on, the, on this desk and radio. Yes. So it's going <laughs> to be interesting. I know you'll be glued for that Jets pick. But, Mikey, from the Jets to the Pats, where are the Jets' rivals going in this draft? Well, you know, there's a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of receivers that have gone already. So you got to go defensive back in Devin Witherspoon. I don't think he's as good as, as, good as Gonzalez. But, uh, you know, he's a hard-hitting, aggressive player, really good in zone, and Bill Belichick loves guys like that. He's going to make him a really good player. Yeah, no, anytime Bill, Bill Belichick, the Patriots, draft a defensive player in the first round, they kind of think, like, oh, that guy's going to be a stud with Bill Belichick uh, being the head coach. But from one perennial playoff team to another, Joe, the Packers coming off a down year. Where do you think they're going to go in this first round? And listen, there's a lot of great tight ends in this year's draft. This is my favorite position, too, because I played this position. But I'm going with Don Kincaid. Listen, there's also Michael Mayer. There's also Luke Musgrave. There's also Darnell Washington. But Kincaid, 70 passes, 800, 890 yards. Listen, this is a guy who's a perfect fit for Green Bay, in my opinion, because the way how I see it, he's a guy who has premium hands, can have contested catchability. He's also super athletic in space. You can also space him out as well. And at this point, for Jordan Love, this is a great, a great guy to have pair him up with. Very very amusing the year Aaron Rodgers leaves so the Packers would draft a pass catcher. That would be very funny. But, Mark, you know, we said we are doing first 16 picks. That only means one thing. Everyone's made their four selections. You are last. Who is your last draft pick? Yeah, so I've got the commanders here with our last pick in this mock draft. And I'm going Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State. Offensive tackle might not be the sexiest of picks, but you really need a guy who you can develop into your cornerstone left tackle. And Paris Johnson can be just that. He can play both tackle positions, super young with high potential. And if Sam Howell really is the guy they think that he could be, protect him. Get Paris Johnson Jr. there. Develop him alongside with Sam Howell. Yeah, I don't know how sold I am on Sam Howe overall in Washington, but definitely a talented roster, more so on the defensive side. They definitely have pieces in play. But 16 picks up, 16 picks down. Gentlemen, I cannot wait for the NFL draft next week. should be a lot of fun. But that will be all we have for you today on WP Sports Desk. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at SportsDeskWP for updates and more. Join us in two weeks as we are off next week for Bravathon. We'd like to give a special thank you to all of our cast and crew and the wonderful studio manager, the tallest man in the room, Al Clark. From Studio B in Hamilton Hall and for everyone at the desk, I'm Jimmy Patton, and we'll see you next time.